rise for our scripture reading this morning. We'll be reading from Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. While Jesus and his disciples were traveling, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him as a guest. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his message. By contrast, Martha was preoccupied with getting everything ready for their meal. So Martha came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to prepare a table all by myself? Tell her to help me. The Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. One thing is necessary. Mar Mary has chosen the better part. It won't be taken away from her. You may be seated. Well, some of you know my, my uh, back's been kind of bothering me all, all summer long, and it's taken a lot of energy out. And I'm going to turn this, this puppy down a little bit. How about that? Is that good? It's almost like too much. Is that, is that okay? Okay, good. And, and so since my back's been bothering me, one of the things I tend to do is uh, at night, I'll take a couple of aspirin to kind of take the edge off that pain so I can sleep through the night. And, uh, you know, as many of us do from time to time, right? And, and so and it, it does, it helps out, it helps get me through the night. And, and so then, you know, if I, if I get up in the morning, it's still kind of bothering me, I, I, I might take a, a couple more aspirin and and, and then if it's, if it's not, you know, if it's still really giving me fits, sometimes I could, I could take a couple more aspirin, you know, to kind of take the, the, the real edge off that, right? And, and, and it's okay because in the, uh, in the hospital, or, or so I've heard, that sometimes they will give you more medicine, right? They will give you, you know, they'll up the morphine or dose or whatever they're giving you for, for pain management. Uh, not that I use that at home, mind you. But, you know, you, and, and you just keep adding on, and, and you can go, okay, well, maybe I'll just take a couple more, and then maybe I'll take a couple more, and it'll be better, right? Because if a little bit works really well, then maybe a lot will be even better. Unless it isn't. Because we, we see how too much of a good thing can be poisonous, right? We see how too much of a good thing can, can lead to, to bad results. If, if I sat down and took 12 as, aspirin at a time, it probably would not do my system much good, would it? No, granted, I might forget about my back for a little bit. But that aside, it would not fall into the good category. And I wonder sometimes if, if, if that's not what we're seeing happening here with Martha. Because she's offering Jesus and his disciples hospitality. That's a good thing. And, and, and in fact, it was, it was a strong part of their culture in those days. And maybe it should be a little bit more of our culture than it is. To offer this extreme hospitality to folks. So when somebody came in... Like when the strangers came up to Abraham, he offered to cook him a meal, and or at least he offered Sarah to cook him a meal, right? So. <laughs> but but offering that extreme hospitality is is an important thing to to make fee, uh, folks feel welcome and loved and cared for, maybe in a at a time and in an area where they wouldn't feel welcomed and cared for. And so God has called God's people to, to be this welcoming community, both then and, and now, right? And I, I, I believe that that's what Martha was doing. She was trying her best to be this, this welcoming presence. And by golly, it was Jesus coming. So you, you want to do it up, don't you? You want to have all the, little, all the little goodies kind of set aside. You want to have all the decorations just right. And you want to have this... This little appetizer, this is my favorite appetizer ever. 
And so we're going to have this little appetizer over here, and then we're going to have this little thing, and then we're going to have, you know, a little bit more. Oh, oh, and then the main dish. Woo, now that's going to be really good, right? And so then we'll have, you know, a couple of different desserts, because Jesus kind of likes this, but he kind of likes that. And, you know, oh, Jesus loves him some lamb chops too. So, so, so you see kind of how it, how it kind of grows, right? And it, 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 we just add on and add on. All really good things, all amazing things. But we see how quickly they can start to overwhelm poor Martha. In her effort to, to do all these wonderful things, she becomes overloaded and even snaps at Jesus and fusses about her dear sister Mary. Bummer. Because I believe that, that Martha really wanted for Jesus to feel loved. And I think what Jesus was trying to tell her, hey Martha, it's okay. Take a breath, sweetheart. We feel welcomed. You inviting us into your home and, and providing us with a good meal is this great source of welcome. Mary, though, she's been part of the welcoming committee, but now she's welcoming us with her presence. Because really, that's, that's what we want to do, right? We want to welcome each other with presence. We want to, to not be doers, but we just want to be with those around us. God calls us into this loving relationship with God and with, and with each other. And sometimes when we get so caught up in doing, it keeps us from just being. Because when we're just being, that's when I think God does God's best work. It's when we are restored, our 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 hearts, our, our lives, our minds are restored when we just sit at Jesus' feet. Such a beautiful picture of Mary, who was pretty radical in her day, right? Because Mary took this step outside of the cultural norm, which is having the women serve and the men are the ones that are over here being with Jesus. But Mary said, no, nope. this is for all of us. And Jesus said, you know what, Mary? It's for all of you. It's for everyone. Not just a select few, but everyone has an opportunity to experience God's love and be restored. But how often have we, we, got, we uh, become so caught up in doing things, just even good things, restore us, then we're not really able to do those good things quite as much anymore. Not that I've ever done that. At least not in the last 15 minutes. <laughs> but how do we find that time? How do we find that time to be with Jesus? and not get pulled in so many different directions. It's countercultural for sure. Because everything in our culture says, do one more thing, be one more thing. We can have it all. But when we have it all, do we? 
Jesus seems to think that we need time to be restored. That we need time to be refreshed and to be filled with God's love. I love how when Jesus reminds Martha, he doesn't criticize her. He doesn't scold her. He doesn't fuss at her. He gently, he gently says, Martha, Martha, my dear Martha, take a breath, sweetheart. I feel welcomed. I want you to feel loved, too. So today, now, we get to, to do this a lot at the river. In, in fact, every, every Sunday when we're at the river, we take time to go and sit on a rock by or, or near the river to be in prayer and, and reflect. And so today is bonus Sunday. I'm going to give you that same opportunity. Now, it might be a haul to drive out to the river. So what we're going to do is right here, and right now, we're going to take a couple minutes, just be in God's presence, and be restored. And to help set the mood, I've asked Anne to play some music for us. So turn your eyes on Jesus, and be restored. Distractions to you spending time at Jesus' feet? If so, what were they and how might you not worry about these things? As we go today, may we remember to find that time put aside the distractions of life because there are a lot of amazing, beautiful, good things that when we take too many of them, they can be poison to our souls. But when we spend time, even just a little time with Jesus, 
we can be restored and made new. Thanks be to God.